you get started, even with your first starting chain, I want to go over your options with you. So you see in the pattern, there's just the regular size, which is what I have here, because I did not feel like I needed the fold over flap. Uh, I know many people like that, and I certainly want to give you that option. So how this pattern is work is to create, let me turn this over, you're going to start creating your rectangle here going in this direction. So this, even though you're working back and forth uh, in a um, short row, this is actually going to be the width. Now, if you want a fold over flap, the option gives you a starting chain that accommodates about a five inch fold over. So if you look here, everything's in as far as it'll go, and it's just the tiniest bit. I'll go for my tallest hook, which is the furls here. So there's really not much there, but I've given you the option to add five inches, which will bring it nicely, you know, down to here. If you want more to come all the way down, add some more. If you want a little bit less, take it away, but I think that five inches is a nice happy medium. And then another thing to keep in mind is when you're working your closure back here, you've got the design, the braid. You'll need to lay everything out once this is folded over because if the flap's up here, that's going to throw all of this off. So in the pattern, the flat part is represented as a different color. That's why there's two tones. It's not because you're meant to use two colors of yarn. All right, so let's get started. My camera is being a little bit temperamental, so I'm going to rework some of this in a smaller swatch, and then some of the other clips will be of the full size. All right, so from the starting chain, let me do a few more just depending on which size you're making. If you're making it with a flap or without the flap, do your chain count. A couple more. Then all of this is half double crochet. Skip the first chain only, and then start working half double crochet across. Right, I'm at the end of my row to my last half double crochet, chain one, turn, and half double crochet across again. And I'm on the last couple here. All right, so here's one. And then there's that turn chain one right here. See how it slants slightly? Go in there. Perfectly straight. So just finish doing that until you get to the length that you need for the amount of hooks that you want to accommodate in your organizer. So as you're working, lay out your rectangle and kind of figure out how much space you need for how many hooks you have. I have quite a few, so my roll is going to be long. When you see those different size handles, I'm going to show you how to accommodate for those. Like this one, the furls hook is quite a wide handle. And I'll put the wider ones probably on, on one side. I'm just checking my spacing, and I have one more about this size sitting out in a project. So this looks good for the size I need.
when you're working along the bottom and you've created your first row of half double crochet that's going to be your pocket row I want to show you how you will be creating that pocket so let's say this is the second row of half double crochet along the bottom pull out here and it says in the instructions to slip stitch going up a row and that is what creates the pocket so I will I'll see my row below that was worked this is the new row that I've worked so I've got to go up that's the row before I've got to go up here because this would be the matching side edge and I'll slip into that then chain one yarn over turn my work to go back and I'm going to look up make sure I'm working into the top of the stitches and then work across again and you'll start to see the pocket forming you'll be doing that with each you'll end each row from now on that same way so you're going up to accommodate the row you just worked that you're finishing and then the row before you can already see the curve here coming but this is making a nice little space down here where your hook can tuck into but we're going to do one more coming back which I think I do have video of for the next for row number three And then now to create that curve, I'm going to look back. Let me see where my first stitch is. Right here, the one I did not, before I did the slip stitch. That's the stitch I'm looking for. Yarn over. This first one's going to be tricky to get into. But we can do it, right? back loop. There we go. Pull through. Pull through. So now just work back loop half double crochets along this edge. Right, when you turn your row, make sure you look all the way over and get up here that you're not working from behind here. So I'm going to turn in my first stitch and work across. Actually, it'll be easier if you just have that part facing you. Kind of the bird's eye view where you're looking down on it. Let me do a few more, and then you can start to see the pocket developing. See so now it's starting to turn upwards. That's got that little space down there so that your hook will nestle in there before we start tightening up the spaces between. All 
right, I've started to work the slip stitch where it will be putting sections in between each hook. And I put some hooks in here just to show you the spacing. So how you're going to do this is as you work your way back, do it like you normally would. Work three stitches, then on the fourth, I'm going to show you what to do. I just did one, so I'm going to work three half double crochet. If you only have slim hooks, so nothing bigger than this, work only two double crochet between your slip. How many did I just do? One, two, okay, one more. Do my third one. So the three stitches is going to give enough flexibility to accommodate even the thicker hooks. Alright, so now I'm going to yarn over, go into my third or my fourth stitch. So I just did three. And I'm going to look. So here's the one I just did. Go over, look down here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to pull, go in here. So I've gone into my stitch and then I'm going to go into the base of the body, turn over, pull all the way back up, and finish my half double crochet. It wasn't really a slip stitch, it was just uh, anchoring the stitch back. All right, then I'm going to work three again and do the same thing. And I'm just going to do this all the way across until I have enough until I've made enough spaces. In my last probably three, I'm only going to work the two stitch option in between because I do have some slimmer hooks that this will be too big for. One more. I'll do one more, I'll show you. Third stitch. Work in, look back, one, two, three, That was three. Again, one, two, three. My hook did not grab that. One, two, three. Let me meet you back when I finish this row. Alright, I finished my row and I'm going to turn it and show you. It should look like this. You have all these little pockets developed. And your hooks will fit right in there. Alright, this is another insert where my camera was not working during making this. So as you come back, this is the, going this direction, so the odd rows are going to go in this direction, and this is the direction where you're making the joins connecting to the main body piece for your invisible pocket. And you can see, and they're done, how they look, but also I want to point out that when you're, since you're only doing the joins coming in this direction, you're going to be going up two stitches just like you do when you slip stitch at the end here because the row coming back this way isn't joining and if you were to join right next to the one below it would pucker up and you should be able to easily fit 
your, well, depending on the width of your fingers, I have such skinny fingers, uh, just slide them down in and make sure you're staying straight. And because you're working in the opposite direction of the stitches of the back, you know, we're not going up in these rows, you've got to be mindful that you're putting it in the same place, otherwise it's going to be a little bit zigzaggy and your needles won't, or your hooks won't easily fit down. What I would do, or what I was doing when I did it, is I'd have my fingers in there as I was working to kind of feel where that join would go and to make sure they were straight along the way. And then here at the end, I ended up making, let's see, see the three stitches between? It's a little chubbier than here with the two stitches between. And then all the way at the end, I just did one for my really skinny bamboo um, double-edged hook down there. So it's customized to fit what I have just perfectly. All right, so when you finish that, you'll do 12 rows total. I'm going to show you how to do the back. I'm excited to show you the project trackers I have designed and I wish I did this years ago because they have been really wonderful to have. So first of all, nice size, fits right into a project bag and this is the large print. In the front of the large print, I want to show you, there is a true to life 4 inch ruler so you can check your gauge easily. You don't have to fumble around look for a ruler. I've used this quite a bit in just the past four projects I've used in this book. And there's also small print. And each of these books has sections for small projects, mid-sized, and large projects like blankets. So the small projects, there's 60 stitches, like a, you know, a dishcloth something like that. And there's room for notes and I have space after each stitch that you check off. If you have to put a note, maybe you changed a color, you changed a stitch, you changed your hook, all of that can be in there. Mid-size projects, 180 stitches and there's room for notes. And then the blanket size, 330 stitches. And then Let's compare the large size print, which I need because I have terrible eyes since I was a teenager, compared to the small size. So handy. And of course a link will be available to get these if you want one for yourself. So you have your eight strands total of lengths of yarn. Line them up evenly and then using a crochet hook, bring them all through that center tab in the middle. Now try to make sure both sides are even. And then to split them from this point, you will have three strands of the contrasting color on each side and then a single strand of the main color. And then pull them through where there are 
two splits in the design and then you bring them back together there in the center at the edge. And then do the same thing on the other side, dividing three each of the contrasting color and one each of the main body color. And then to work the braid, you're going to divide up your strands. There will be two each of the contrasting color, which is the gray, or rather three sections of two strands of the gray. And two of those three sections will each have one strand of the main color. And then just braid it fairly snugly, not too loose, not too tight. And then I will show you how to do the invisible tassel knot with the gold embroidery thread. You can use regular yarn if you don't have or don't want the gold. So what I do is make a U, a long U, about three inches on each side. And then with the free edge facing upwards towards the braid, not towards the end, I'm going to start tightly wrapping the working end of the thread around and make sure that the bottom of that loop is down there because I'll need to catch it when I finish wrapping. But wrap enough to make it pretty, you know, maybe half inch or so, depending how long you want your free edges to be. I'm going to cut the, the uh, thread and pull it through that loop on the bottom that I made earlier and pull it really snug. And then that free strand that I created at the beginning that I mentioned should be facing up. Pull that really tight and that's going to bring that loop up and knot it beneath the decorative twisting you just did. And then you can cut both ends off and that will hold it. And just repeat it on the other side. And then trim down the ends to the length that you want them to be, the fringe. Mine are about an inch and a half 